I finally have all the products I need here to build a fully custom hardlined water-cooled PC. Now it has taken me months to get to this point in time right here. Between doing hours and hours of research and all sorts of shipment delays and extreme high demand for some of these products, it's insane. Like just to try and get your hands on some of these uh, components is very, very difficult. Specifically the RTX 3090 and the Ryzen 9 5950X, it's just been a nightmare to try and get these two items here. Uh, so I'm happy I did. Luckily for the graphics card, there was actually six of them in stock at Canada Computers in Barrie in store and they weren't allowing anyone to buy them online. So if you went to the store, you were basically guaranteed a graphics card. So I don't live in Barrie, but my sister does. So I was able to call her and ask her to pick up this graphics card. And luckily she was free. She picked up the graphics card and I didn't have to worry about that. So that was awesome. But for the CPU, the AMD Ryzen 9, that was a different story. I had to go to eBay and basically pay for an overpriced version of the CPU. It wasn't marked up too much, but I literally could not find it anywhere in stock. And I really, really, really just wanted to get all the components in so I could start this build. So luckily there was one on eBay, it wasn't too much. Decided to get it and I'm happy I did. Now, both the graphics card and the CPU have their own water blocks. So the graphics card's got a water block and a nickel backplate. Uh, the CPU has its own mono block. So what's cool about the mono block is it's gonna cool the CPU, but it's also gonna cool part of the motherboard. So the VRMs and such on the motherboard are also gonna be water cooled, which is awesome. And the fact that it looks cooler because it's much larger as opposed to a little block that only covers the CPU. So for the coolant, I have Cloud White EK Cryo Fuel Solid from EK Water Blocks. All the water cooling components are from EK Water Blocks. Uh, so we got fittings. I got lots of fittings, 90 degrees straight, 45. Um, I got Cryonaut Extreme Thermal Paste. So this stuff recently actually just came out. And it's supposed to be really good, uh, so I got it. Top of the line build, wanna have some top of the line thermal paste. Uh, it's mainly me meant for like LN2, overclocking with liquid nitrogen and stuff, such, but I won't be doing any of that, but still I like to have uh, a high quality thermal paste in a build of this tier. So I also have 10 fans because I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting in three 360 millimeter radiators. Uh, so these are the Noctua NF-A12s. Uh, so super high performance, high static pressure fans. They should work really, really well in this build. Now the fans are brown, which I don't like, but stick around because I'm going to be showing you here real shortly how to make these brown Noctua NF-A12s look much, much better in my opinion. Uh, so for the power supply, I have the HX1200i, so 1200 watt power supply by Corsair. Corsair is a great company, should be reliable. So for the motherboard, I have the X570 Aorus Master. Now they just recently released a updated BIOS that supports the Ryzen 9 5000 series CPUs. So this should work totally fine with the build. Um, I have a cable mods kit here. So they're gonna be nice cable mesh. So the nice crispy white cables, uh, custom sleeved. I have right here, I have a EK leak tester. So instead of just crossing your fingers <laughs> and putting like paper towel in your computer to see if you can spot any leaks. You can actually pressurize the loop as you build it. And as long as the pressure remains and it doesn't decrease over time, uh, basically your loops leak tested. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I have some isopropyl alcohol, 99%. So that's good for cleaning off old thermal paste on your components such as the GPU so that you can apply new thermal paste or thermal pads. I have a the D5 EK water blocks pump. So that's supposed to be a really good pump. I don't know much about pumps, but it's really, really popular in water cooling, so it should work fine for my needs. And as you can see, it's a standalone. So there's two types of pump. There's a standalone, and there's a pump that's integrated with a reservoir but I'm gonna have my reservoir here separate from my pump because 
mainly just because of aesthetics. I think it's going to look really cool and it's also unique. A lot of people integrate their pumps with their reservoirs and that's just not something I wanted to do. Now I got uh, had to go out and buy a heat gun so that I can bend the hardline tubes here. And down here are some silicone inserts that you insert into the tubes so that when you heat the tube up it doesn't like collapse in on each on itself and doesn't go all like noodly and like really seize and melt together. So heat gun needed. Same with these silicone inserts so that I can bend my tubes. And I also got a mandrel kit. Mandrel kit is just like 90 degrees, 45 degrees so you can get accurate uh, precise bends when you're bending stuff. So I also have a a vertical upright display kit for the graphics card. So instead of putting the graphics card horizontally in the case, I have a kit that's going to allow me to mount it vertically so you get to see uh, the graphics card from a vertical point of view. Now with this kit, I have also purchased a PCIe Express 4.0 uh, riser cable because the kit comes with a 3.0, but my motherboard and graphics card are both PCIe Express 4.0. So I want to make sure the whole uh, connection from the graphics card to the motherboard supports PCIe Express 4.0. Now the riser cable that I have chosen is by Linked Up. They make a bunch of riser cables, a bunch of different lengths, and they support a bunch of different motherboards. So if you're looking for a good 4.0 riser cable, uh, I recommend picking that one up. So for the case, I've chosen the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic XL by Der Bauer. Now this case has a ton of positive reviews online and the second I saw it I really fell in love with its design specifically the full glass side and front panels and also the fact that the power supply unit is located behind where the motherboard sits so that way you actually have a ton of vertical room to play with which is awesome for custom water-cooled builds now this case is really common which is unfortunate so you're gonna see a lot of builds in this case but I think with the components I've chosen and what I have envisioned in my mind, I think I'm going to be able to still create something really, really unique in it, inside the O11 Dynamic XL. One other liquid cooling component that I forgot to mention is I have a nickel plated flow indicator. So as the water flows through the indicator, this little wheel spins so you can see it, very common in water cooling. And for the storage, I have three uh, Sabrin uh, M.2 NVMe drives. Uh, two terabit capacity each, so six terabits of ultra high speed PCIe Express 4.0 storage. And also, as kind of like a mass storage that's a little slower, I have two of these Samsung 860 Evos in four terabits, so eight terabits total there. And for the RAM, I went with the Trident Z 64 gigabyte 3600 megahertz CL14 uh, high speed RAM. So 64 gigs is, should be plenty enough for editing and that kind of workflow, maybe a little bit of renders and Blender, 3D applications, that kind of stuff. So I could have purchased 128 gigabytes of RAM given the high-end components that I have going in this build. But honestly, for my needs, I will not need 128 gigabytes of RAM, uh, let alone 64 most of the time. Uh, I rarely go over 32 gigabytes of RAM, but sometimes in intensive applications, such as Blender, or if I have multiple Adobe products open, such as Premiere Pro, Illustrator, Photoshop, and I'm trying to do massive exports or something like that, it's nice to have more than 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, one other thing I've noticed with the Adobe products is, let's say you have like a huge transition package, which is a Premiere Pro project file, and you want to take that large project file that's filled with thousands of transitions and put it into uh, a new project you're working on that uses a ton of RAM. So having um, at least 32 gigabytes, preferably 64 gigabytes, you're not going to run into any issues and it's going to be really fast when you grab that massive project file and drop it into your new uh, project. So the last thing that's worth mentioning is this. This is the Primo Chill RFB Rigid Finishing Bit. Now this can be a lifesaver when you're doing hardline water cooling builds because whenever you have hardline tubing and you cut it, you're left with rough edges. And if you take that rough edge as it is, try and insert it into one of your fittings, you could damage the O-ring, which could cause leaking, which you do not want. 
and if you didn't have this bit you would have to resort to using sandpaper or some sharp tools to try and finish those edges and smooth them out but with this finishing bit you literally just put this bit on the end of the drill and zip the end of the tube for like literally five seconds with the drill ap applying force and then the end of the tube is going to be perfectly smooth and finished so I highly recommend getting one of these little guys if you're doing a hardline water cooling build. So the reason why I'm building such a high-end computer is because first of all I am an enthusiast. I'm really passionate about high performance computing and technology in general. Second, I'm getting more into video production and post-processing of videos and I pl plan on actually purchasing a new camera here soon. So it's going to be able to shoot high resolution, it's going to have much, much higher uh, bit rates, it's going to be able to shoot external raw 16-bit, so all those specifications uh, are going to be really, really taxing when you take that footage from that sort of camera into your computer, and the computer I have now can barely handle this camera, let alone a much, much higher end camera. So it is going to be nice to have such an insanely high end computer that I won't have to edit with proxies, like let's say, uh, and for those of you who don't know, proxies are the act of taking like a 4K uh, video that you shot and scaling it down to 720p just so that you can edit it in 720p, but whenever you hit export, it exports in the full uh, 4K resolution. That makes it a lot easier to edit, but unfortunately when you're editing in the timeline at 720p, uh, your video is going to look really pixelated and it's not going to be true to life when you're editing it, so it's nice to have a native 4K uh, video to edit or 6K, whatever you're shooting. The third reason would be because I'm getting into more 3D animation and design specifically in Blender. Now the issue with Blender on lower end PCs is the fact that inside the viewport you're only able to view like this real basic looking mesh. So again, it's kind of like a 720p proxy. You're not able to work with the native um, like high resolution uh, rendered scene. So in the 3D world, uh, instead of like resolution being the biggest importance, it's its final render, so textures of certain assets and stuff like that. But what's amazing about the new technology and hardware inside of something like an RTX 3090 is the fact that you can literally work in your viewport with basically a fully rendered file, make changes, and it's basically going to update pretty, pretty damn fast, which is awesome. And the fourth thing being gaming. I've been gaming for as long as I can remember, and being able to game on a machine like this is going to be absolutely insane. So let's get this computer built, test it out, and see how it performs. So the fans I've chosen for this build are Noctua's NFA-12s. The A-12s are a premium ultra-silent fan. Now this is actually one of the best performing 120mm case fans that you can purchase. This fan has a thickness of 25mm, but Noctua also makes an A-12 that has a thickness of 15mm. What's great about the thicker fans is that they have a higher static pressure. And anytime you're doing a water-cooled build and you're using radiators, radiators perform much better with high static pressure fans. Now the one thing I do like about Noctua's thinner A12, the 15mm version, is the fact that it comes in black. I've heard that the 25mm is supposed to come in black, this fan here, at some point, but it hasn't yet, and I'm just really not digging this color scheme. So what I'm going to do to solve that is I have this. This is Plasti dip. Now this is a matte white Plasti dip, and what Plasti dip is is it's a multi-purpose rubber coating. So what's going to be better with rubber as opposed to a traditional spray paint is that it's going to act as a dampener. So if you take a look at this fan, there's these little rubber inserts on all the corners of the fan, and that those are used to actually act, act as a dampener so that there's no unnecessary vibration and noise when the fan is operating. 
Now I've actually spray painted three of these fans already and they turned out really, really well. So here's three white Plasti dipped Noctua NF A12s. So they perform just as good and they look great. Uh, I just, I can't get over how well they turned out. Like it looks so, so good. So the rubber coating's great. It's, I probably won't need these rubber grommets. I'll, I'll check to see if I need them in the future. But yeah, I love the rubber coating and I really love how they turned out. And I think they're gonna look awesome in the build.
So for the airflow, I have these bottom fans mounted on this 360 millimeter radiator, which are configured to intake air into the case. Now the reason why I chose the bottom as the intake is because on the O11 Dynamic XL, you have this real easily accessible dust filter on the bottom of the case. So this bottom radiator is going to be feeding both the rear and top mounted 360mm rads as these fans are configured to exhaust air out of the case. Now something that's a little unconventional is the fact that I have this rear exhaust fan flipped around and configured to intake air into the case. The reason why I've done this is because I'd much rather have fresh room temperature air feeding this top mounted radiator as this is gonna be a liquid cooled build, so it's much more important to get fresh air into the loop as opposed to air that's been already filtered through this bottom radiator, for example. Another point here is if you did have air cooled components, such as an air cooled CPU in an air cooled GPU, these components would be throwing off a lot of heat inside of the case, which would make it important to exhaust the air. Whereas in my case, it's more important to intake fresh air and feed the loop. Anyways, Let's get that motherboard ready and continue with the installation.
They're going crazy on the shit.
D Light are going crazy on this shit.